There it is. Okay, good. Okay, how's that? Now you can hear me. All right. <laughs> I, yes, okay, good. And now because of the delay, no sound. Thank you, David. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you. Okay, okay great. Sue. Excellent. Okay, we're back. There we go. Thank you, Kaylee. Okay, great. Thank you, David. All right, we can't hear you. Yes, now you can. Hang in there, everybody. The most important thing is that you can see me, right? I mean, I think that's really why we're doing this. Not, it's not radio, it's video. And I wanted you to see this. I, um, I trimmed it up a little bit. Mom, you should be happy. I can hear, I'm not happy. She does not like this. Um, and, you know, thank you for weighing in last week about that, about this little facial growth. Uh, I think we're about a 50-50. Like everything else in the world, we're so divided. If you're either on team beard or team no beard. Um, although a few people have also been kind of like, eh, I don't care, whatever. Um, yeah, so, but it's fun. I don't know, it's not going to last. It's very, uh, it's very um, itchy and uh, I don't know, I don't like it. It feels tight. So I don't think it's going to last, but that's okay. Unless it grows, I grow out of this phase, you know, and it doesn't get itchy or something like that, then maybe I'll keep it, but whatever, we'll see. All right, come on in, everybody. Nice to see you all. Uh, here I am, this little fire here that puts out zero heat. Just, I've got, it's like I've got have my hand in the fire right now, almost. All right, there, that was it. But it, there's just not a lot of heat coming off of this. I don't know, maybe I need to turn it up. Down. It's a gas, obviously. Oh, oh, oh dear. That's not what I wanted. Wait, oh, is that good? Okay. Yeah, that might be better. Oh, well. Okay, so, um, so hi, everyone. I will, uh, I'm gonna, what am I hearing? There's something. I do have guests, but they're not here. Ah, here they come. Here come some guests. So uh, I have some house guests. So it's gonna might get a little bit loud here, um, but there they are. They're coming in right now. That's fine. You're not on camera. Hello there. Okay, everyone. So um, yeah, come on in. You're great. Uh, so I have some house guests here. Uh, we're staying with me for a little while until they can move into their new house. So it's great. Um, okay. I'll be not distracted anymore. Um, uh, let me, so what I want to share with you is just this, uh, this is kind of, I always talk about like what I did this week. So this week, um, I got to spend the whole day in a, uh, in a prison. Um, yes, I got out at the end of the day. No, I wasn't there. I wasn't sentenced, but I went there because a local parish, this is beyond Tallahassee in Monticello, Jefferson Correctional Institution, um, the nearby parish well, people go there every Wednesday for a communion service or when the priest is available for mass and confessions. And uh, so that same parish put on an all-day retreat. And it was really neat. About 120 men were there for the whole day. And um, I was there for the whole day and a couple other people from the, uh, from the office. Uh, Derek, who edits, does a lot of our editing and photos and videography and <clears throat> stuff like that. And um, Aida was there, who works with me as well. And uh, it was just a really neat day. Um, we, they, they allowed us all to come and they allowed Derek to bring his camera in there. So there's some really neat uh, photos, photographs on, which is on our webpage, the diocesan webpage under our bishop. There's a whole bunch of photos there. You can see those there. And, um, and then they allowed us to bring in food as well. Muffins, really nice, huge muffins that were bigger than my head for uh, in the morning. We had muffins and, and uh, coffee and then um, a, a good uh, Mexican lunch, Mexican food for lunch. And they loved that. Um, but we gave talks, we prayed, we prayed the rosary with them, uh, celebrated mass. Uh, another priest came in and we um, celebrated the sacrament of reconciliation with uh, several of the men. And it was just a really neat time. I gave a talk um, on why we are here, why are we here, why are we here on earth, what's the purpose of life and everything. And that was very well received. And, um, and then uh, 
And then I just kind of answered questions for a long time with them. And I find this, this happens not only in our schools, but also, yeah, in our prisons and jails. When I go there, I just ask the guys, do, do you have any questions for me? And they have a million questions. I don't know if, I, if you remember me telling you this. I went to one of the prisons and, and they were asking question after question about just things like, you know, tell us about the hat that you wear, the miter. Um, why is... Uh, there, oops, okay, the comment there. Um, why, uh, what was the little zucchetto, things like that. You know, they ask all these questions. And this was going on for 45 minutes. And I said, well, this is really neat, you guys. I mean, I didn't think you'd care that much or you have that many questions for me. And one guy, one of the inmates raised his hand and he said, uh, you do realize that the longer you're here, the longer we get to stay out of our cells. So I said, ah, I see. All right, fine. Then they all laughed. But, um, but nonetheless, they asked a lot of questions and I was telling them stories. I told them the story about how I got received the call to be a bishop and everything. And, and um, it was very interesting. And then today I did the same thing at a grade school in Fort Walton Beach at St. Mary. I was there, I celebrated mass with the kids and then went classroom to classroom, answering questions, talking to all the kids. It was great. And what it, it occurred to me today that a lot of the questions were very similar and the common question that I'm asked everywhere, I was asked in the prison and I was asked today in all the classrooms is, show us your socks. What socks are you wearing? So that's kind of fun. Um, I forgot what I was wearing on Monday, but today these are just like uh, Christmas socks. Anyway, I know it's not Christmas, it's Advent, but I've got a lot of these socks and only 10 more days to wear them. So I have to do that. But I do want to say that um, the, I think the men appreciated the retreat very much. Some, I think maybe of the 120, I would say at least 30, 40 were not Catholic, but wanted to come to see what we do. And their Catholic friends invited them to go. And let's be honest, it was a whole day out of the ordinary. And, and uh, so people signed up for that reason, but they all told us afterwards how much they appreciated it. And the non-Catholics, especially how much they learned about our faith um, you know, some people said, well, I thought you all were, it was a cult or something, or just, I didn't know what to think of Catholics, but I appreciate it now. I learned a lot about you all, and, and, um, and now I, I know, so that's kind of neat. And I think the thing that really touched them the most is just that we said, you know, people are praying for you, and we are praying for you, um, for your ongoing conversion, for reconciliation, for whatever you did, but just also just were praying for you and they were really happy about that because they said it just feels like you know a lot of times we're all we're forgotten here and some of them are there for their whole lives the rest of their lives and um, just they said to, to know that people in your parishes and your churches are thinking of us and praying for us means a lot so I said I would pass that on to you and to our parishes and our schools so thank you for for that I mean it's it's clearly Jesus felt very strongly about ministering to those who were in prison. It's one of the corporal works of mercy. In Matthew 25, Jesus said, I was hungry and you gave me food, thirsty, etc. I was in prison and you visited me. So if you can't visit those, our, our brothers and sisters who are in prison, then please support the ministries and the parishes. And, um, and also, at least, all of us can do this. Pray for them pray for uh, our sisters and brothers who are affected by incarceration right now. Okay, and then, um, yeah, then I went to uh, St. Mary, which was a blast. I love going to uh, a school. I went and went to all the uh, grades and sat down and uh, uh, just talked to them, especially with the little pre-K kids. I sat on the floor. I brought a um, lunchbox and um, of course, you know, I knew they were going to ask me, what's in your lunchbox? You know, it was a Star Wars lunchbox. And I said, well, I didn't know what to bring. So I packed my own, my own lunchbox and kind of built that up. And the little kids are like, show us. So I sat down and I opened it up. And of course, it was silly. But, you know, I pulled out a stapler, um, some glue. I took a, a bottle of tomato paste from my pantry and a bottle of maraschino cherries. Not a bottle, a jar and uh, some sticky notes and things like that. And uh, of course they were laughing, you know, you can't eat a stapler. And um, so that was fun. And then, so what I did is I traded some of those items for food shamelessly. 
So I got um, Chex Mix, a bag of Chex Mix, which I like, uh, for that tomato paste jar. I gave that to some poor kid in fourth grade or whatever, and they're going to take it home like, look what I traded. Bishop Bill gave me this for my Chex Mix. I'm sure he's going to get in trouble, and so am I. Um, and I almost traded the, the jar of maraschino cherries, but because some eighth grade girl wanted to give me her sandwich for it, that would have been awesome. Um, I almost did it, but then I see I do have an internal editor. I'm like, no, Bill, probably not a good idea. I imagined her, you know, opening it, eating it with all her friends and everything, and I don't think you should eat a whole jar of maraschino cherries, and I shouldn't be giving them food like that. So I said, no. I, no, but I'll take your sandwich. I'll take half your sandwich anyway. So I did because I'm the bishop. <laughs> anyway, I uh, traded some other things for um, for it. So it's great for all my for the sticky notes and everything else. But it was really really fun. It was good to be with the kids. Okay, that's what I wanted to share with you. And then just some good news. What I told the kids in the homily is this: um, two great things happened this week. Um, both of them involve babies. So my niece who lives in Australia, she and her husband live there. She just gave birth yesterday, today. Uh, it's, I don't know what day it is in Australia, but it, maybe last week, but anyway, it was, it was 12 hours ago, 24, I don't know, um, to a little boy uh, named Liam. So that's kind of fun. So we talked about that. And then friends of mine, um, who I, whom I've known for a long time, have been waiting for news of an adoption and they were contacted on Monday uh, that a birth mother had selected them. And so um, they're overjoyed. Their hearts have been broken before. They've gotten that call, but then the, the birth mother has changed her mind, which is good. We want the birth mother to raise her, her child. But, um, but so they're cautiously optimistic and they have until tomorrow to change their minds. Um, but after tomorrow, then they'll be able to take the child into their home and uh, give the child a name and everything. And so they are overjoyed that they, uh, they have, they've been selected to be parents for this child. And so for both of those, this, these joyous, joyful events, I talked with the little kids there at school about that. What do you do? How do, they, how do you prepare to bring a baby into your home? And you, know, you buy a bunch of diapers, you paint the room, you buy a crib and all that stuff. And you start telling people and you ask them to pray for you as the day gets closer and all of that. Um, and so, uh, and just kind of was building the excitement of that. And then I said, it's just like, that's what God is, was like before Jesus came in the flesh, you know, it was like God was getting the world ready. And he said, I'm coming, I'm going to come there personally. And, and we prayed for it and prayed for it. And then he came, you know, and, and then I talked about how we need to prepare to receive him again at Christmas, you know, to get our hearts ready to receive the Lord. I think they got it. So that was kind of fun. I was pretty pleased with that homily. I'm glad because if you read the first reading today, it was pretty harsh. It's from Isaiah who says, I think he says, you worm Israel, you maggot Jerusalem. Kind of tough for a grade school, you know, for pre-K three or kindergarten kids to hear. So I didn't really talk about that, but talked about the other thing instead. So that was kind of neat. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you. I will be here next week and I realize there's only one more Thursday, I believe, before Christmas. Is that right? I think so. I don't know. What's today? I'm not good at math. Today's the 14th, so that's the 21st. Yeah, so only one more Thursday before. So I'm probably going to do Annie and Willie's prayer. If you remember that, that long Christmas poem that I've memorized. Um, if I don't do it next Thursday, I'll do it the following Thursday when I'm visiting my mom and siblings there in South Bend, Indiana. So that'll be fun. And maybe I'll get Ma on camera, even as she runs away into the other room. Something like that. I'll get the back of Mom as she's running away. But, um, but if I don't do it next week, I'll do it the, the week after that, Annie and Willie's prayer. The reason I might not do it next week is because, <laughs> this is interesting, I'm going to be playing pickleball uh, next Thursday evening. There's a group that plays every day, I believe, at Holy Spirit Parish in Perdido here uh, to the west of us. And um, a lot of people play there, and they asked me to come and play. I've done it once. They gave me a, they call it a racket, a paddle, I don't know. And um, so that'll be really fun. So, oh, did I just do that? Oh, I did that. I went like that, and it did that little heart. Did you see that? Yeah, there it is. Anyway, um, so, uh, 
I guess I'm gonna play pickleball and then I'm gonna like do this there in the gym so you'll be able to see everyone behind me playing pickleball or something like that. I don't know how this is gonna work, but I probably this is probably not gonna be conducive for my Christmas poem. So it might be the week after that. Anyway, okay, great. Uh, I hope all is well. Um, I did, I, I know somebody said, stop doing all those hand gestures or whatever, but it's kind of fun, right? And then I did, I learned that's one. Yeah, look at that, that's kind of fun. Or two down is something. What is that, lasers? And then there's, I think this or something. Anyway, there's some fun things. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, great. <laughs> can you see these? I hope you guys can see all these things. What is that one? Rain? Yeah, that's weird. Okay, anyway, so you need both hands to do that and then that does the lightnings, or the, the fireworks. Okay, everybody, it's great to be with you. Um, who says the beard will have to go? Jeanette. Darn, that's harsh, but I guess, yeah, anyway, okay. All right, everybody, I'm gonna say a prayer and then um, we'll go, okay. Hey, I wonder if this should do something if you do this, does that do anything? That should be like, oh, the angels sing, you know, if you do that. Okay, fine, let's pray. Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord our God, we thank you for the gift of Advent, for the gift of this season of waiting, of expectation, of hoping, of longing for the coming of Christ. Help us to prepare our hearts, our homes, our families, our world to receive in a new way Christ our King so that we may delight in his presence. And like Mary and Elizabeth and John the Baptist and the shepherds and the angels and the magi, and then share his, the good news of his presence with all we meet. Bless us, bless those who are waiting for news, maybe a medical procedure or adoption or the birth of a child or something like that. Be with them, be their strength as they wait, give them patience, and help us all to wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Bless all of your people, those watching and through us, bless our families and friends. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, everybody, God bless you. One more fireworks. Little scene there, okay. Have a great night. God bless you, goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.